and thanks again for having Cloud Health, uh, you know, be a part of today and, uh, you know, give an overview as far as where we fit into the market and what we've been seeing as a result of, you know, these times in the last year or change. So, um, again, my name is Graham Cartwright. I'm one of the sales engineers at Cloud Health by VMware. Uh, just a, a quick agenda or overview uh, as far as the focus of what we're going to be covering today uh, is around the healthcare IT landscape. You know, who we are, Cloud Health as a company by VMware since we've been acquired, uh, as far as a cloud management, some of the challenges that some of our customers face or that we've seen in the industry today. And then cloud management and maturity framework that a lot of our customers have either already adopted, continue to adopt or plan to, you know, as they continue that journey into the cloud. And then some of the best practices that we've seen as well uh, as a use case, you know, to tie things together from a healthcare standpoint. So as far as, you know, the pandemic being a real thing that everyone for the most part has been impacted by, really one of the main things that we've seen uh, across the board is extreme volatility across multiple companies, either cloud spends on a month to month basis. Uh, there's a lot of you know, pressure to adapt, whether that means communicating or attending uh, what was live and in person, uh, you know, meetings, uh, trade shows, things like that, that's now shifted to more of a virtual event uh, like we're available or we're on today, which also you know, attributes to the need to adapt uh, as far as what services you're using and whether those are in the cloud, um, or focusing on a compute or serverless architecture. And so then as a result of that, uh, you know, we've really seen a, an increase in that serverless architecture, more uh, of a migration and rethinking of a strategy to a containerized environment, which in turn, you know, does decrease in compute workloads. Uh, and so, you know, that migration to the newer mentality or adopting to what's needed. So uh, as far as some numbers just down below that you can take a look at, you know, we have seen a little bit of a dip, uh, about 10% or just south of that in compute spends. Uh, but as a result, we've seen a, a rise of about 32% and change uh, in database, as well as an increase of about 34% in containers and nearly 75% uh, of a rise in serverless architectures. So uh, we do have a link and, you know, Ron will be able to share this out to everyone uh, that you encourage you to take a look at if you want to dig into that a little bit further. Uh, but those are some of the things just across the board that we're seeing as a result of the pandemic and how it's changed healthcare. As far as you know, Cloud Health, who we are as a company and why VMware uh, for healthcare, a little bit of a background about us is that we've been around for you know nine, 10 years or so and change. And about two years ago, we were acquired by VMware, which has uh, you know, been one of the moguls in the industry for about 20 years or so. So right after uh, their 20th birthday, they acquired Cloud Health. Uh, as a cloud management solution. And so really, I mean, not to write, read right off the slide, but uh, we're there to enable greater business and service continuity at scale across the healthcare operations. So being able to leverage public and hybrid cloud to rapidly adapt capabilities and services, you know, accounting for any kind of spikes, uh, patent and employee demands, support new care delivery sites, virtual care models, as just a way of working with agile and uninterrupted access to health systems and data across cloud, mobile, and edge environments. As far as you know, a little bit of a, a higher level overview of what we've managed from a multi-cloud standpoint, we've got over 10,000 customers spread across multi-cloud management, spending somewhere roughly around 11 billion plus on an annual basis. Of that, you can see some of the cloud providers from a public cloud standpoint that we work with down across the bottom. You have AWS, Azure, GCP or Google, Oracle or OCI, and then of course the VMware Cloud Foundation. As far as the, the makeup of that, you know, a lot of these companies, almost 50% at this point, utilize at least one public cloud that they're managing. If you look at the next one, we have 52% are managing two or more public clouds and or hybrid clouds. So that's actually increased, uh, you know, broader than just that uni cloud or the one cloud approach. And then you do have the 9% makeup that are looking at three or more public clouds or hybrid clouds, but that number is still increasing uh, every year. You know, we do participate in these angel beats. So something to keep in mind. As far as, you know, the cloud health multi-cloud management vision, we look at some of the different users, uh, you know, that come to the table when they're entertaining the concept of cloud health. T typically, we're seeing, you know, folks from a financial management standpoint, uh, operational or looking to, you know, handle governance 
And then, you know, those who are interested in the security and compliance aspect of it. Uh, you'll see this in a slide or so uh, when I cover the maturity model as well. Uh, but, you know, being able to tackle all aspects of the platform, whether it be our perspective capabilities, policies, and automated action, uh, integrating to your data layer, and then, you know, what that's tying back to across the public clouds, whether it be uh, information as a service, containers, uh, or platform as a service. Really, we're out there to help you simplify all these from a financial management standpoint to operational, uh, as well as security and compliance. So I'll dive into that a little bit in a sec as well. So from a maturity um, management framework, uh, we do have an assessment that I encourage you to take at the end, uh, and I'll share the link for that as well. But really, it can depend, you know, how long a company has been, um, you know, relevant within the cloud, uh, utilizing it, uh, or where they want to be and currently are, or where they sit. So by looking at this, you know, it doesn't necessarily define that you're an immature company if you're down in the bottom left corner. It's just where you are in your current journey uh, as far as uh, cloud management. So we typically find customers starting to look at the three uh, topics or concept, as I mentioned on the last slide, financial management, operations, and security and compliance in no particular order. And then initially looking at components of visibility. So whether that be reporting, dashboards, uh, any kind of uh, insight into their cloud accounts or maybe across multiple clouds that they're not getting today. Optimization, you know, being able to identify areas of whether it's operational savings, uh, if we're not, you know, utilizing resources to their fullest, uh, or if there's ways to go about procuring and purchasing things at a discount that'll then in turn save the company some money. Governance and automation, being able to put either policies, uh, reports, alerts, anything in play that either has automation baked into it to be able to put different guardrails and controls uh, across your cloud environments to make sure you're working towards maybe a cloud center of excellence model that you've developed. And then business integrations, tying it back to other products, uh, KPIs that you may have that uh, the team needs to achieve, you know, being able to uncover and identify some of those areas that we can close the gaps on. When we take a look and we think about visibility, this is an example of one of the reports that we can put together. And um, you'll see across the top that we have a couple of toggles that we can manipulate. Uh, as far as this particular example, towards the right, you see category set to project. This is an example of one of our perspectives that we can leverage based off of a company's tagging strategy or naming structure to then take it to the next level and be able to highlight and identify by segmenting out what those different groups are. So instead of looking at it based on the AWS resource tags or how you know their native tools and services are, are typically built out, we can now use business terms to kind of tie that back to attribute what's being spent in what areas or across what categories. So in this case, we're looking at a cost related. We can also look into usage or performance related reports. This will help us whether you know your customer is utilizing or trying to um, you know focus on a chargeback or showback model. Uh, and then, you know, kind of working towards that, uh, establishing a culture of accountability, you know, who's spending what and why, uh, and then figuring out where to go moving forward. From an operational standpoint, you know, I mentioned areas of spend that you can uh, help to reduce or, uh, you know, focus on, whether it's, uh, in this case, you can see operational efficiencies under that immediate monthly savings, We've got uh, unused DBS volumes, which a lot of times go unforgotten, or, or excuse me, go forgotten, uh, and you know individuals forget about. As opposed to being able to manage that, we can put a uh, you know policy in the background in place to make sure that that doesn't happen again, or we can at least identify it if you don't have visibility into that today. Through automation, we can help to terminate those particular EBS volumes and then save some money there. Um, I don't have a, a particular visual of this one, but as far as right sizing, looking at underutilized or over provisioned EC2 instances, or if you're in Azure, uh, VMs, GCP, compute, and then uh, exchanges when it comes to either convertibles uh, or if you're you know, working with reservations, and we even support savings plans now today to help determine what the best purchasing plan would be moving forward to help you save by committing to some sort of usage or discount. When we think about governance and policies, this is an example of one to monitor and make sure that costs aren't increasing based on a particular account's billing statement or across all accounts. You know, when you want that to run, what you want the focus to be. And then you'll then set conditions such as 
what the cost increase looks like and if it's the threshold is met, so in this case, greater than 20% across the seven day period, then we want some sort of action to take place. In this example of the screenshot here, we're showing you know, being able to just trigger off or send an email to our sandbox user, whoever would be the recipient at the end of that email. However, we could implement actions to either delete something uh, or notify the team um, or create a snapshot. So certain levels of actions or alerts, depending on how you typically go about governing. Again, to work towards that uh, CCOE or Cloud Center of Excellence strategy. And then the last one, you know, business integrations, being able to tie in and ensure that those metrics from a cloud standpoint are aligned to business KPIs, integrating with different business systems and accounting for security, as well as, you know, other uh, tools that you're trying to align to, whether that's different solutions out there or different integrations that we hook into, ultimately hoping to align to that cloud center of excellence. So again, some examples of folks that might get involved and start asking these sorts of questions or making these comments. This is where we can come in and tie everyone together in one unified platform. So in closing, more or less, uh, to cover an example uh, of a great example of a, a, a healthcare customer, uh, happens to be by the name of Change Healthcare. So a little bit of a background, uh, this company is utilizing you know, all three of those clouds that we have there listed for AWS, GCP, and Azure. So again, in that third or fourth slide that I showed, uh, they only make up a 9% uh, of what we typically see in the market today of utilizing three or more clouds, but our use case, you know, or this use case in particular helped to solve some of their challenges. So just what the company does, um, essentially they improve patient care through software analytics, network solutions, and technology-enabled services. They serve 5,500 hospitals with 2,200 payer connections. And really, when the conversation began, they needed a platform to help effectively manage their new cloud environment and accelerate their cloud journey. So as a result of implementing Cloud Health, they were able to reserve instances using our management suite there, which helped them save hundreds of thousands of dollars per year. As far as their cloud uh, center of excellence and being able to follow any sort of security policies, we're able to hook into the center of internet security uh, through the policy that we've developed and created, which allow them to remain compliant or at least give them the exact level of control or visibility that they needed into their systems from a security standpoint. And then, you know, tying everything together, you know, that level of support that they were willing to work with us on, um, they needed timely responses. And so our support team was able to engage with them uh, whenever uh, to ensure that they were able to be successful and meet their requirements and needs. Um, so just to tie things off, over on the right-hand side, we have a quote from Brent Strong, the manager of cloud engineering and operations over at Change Healthcare. And it's simply put, anytime we have questions, cloud health support has been seamless and the team has been very responsive, um, which I think speaks to a lot of the, uh, the service that we're willing to put forth for a lot of our customers and making sure that they are successful and it's not just a plug and play platform. So that's really all I had to bring to the table today. Uh, as far as that cloud maturity assessment uh, model or um, you know test that you can take, uh, you can visit cloudhealthtech.com and you should be able to access it. Shouldn't take you more than five minutes just to understand where you might fit um, from a cloud maturity standpoint, uh, and just understanding you know where cloud health might be able to fit in your environment today. So thank you.